Okay, well, first of all, thank you very much for this really nice prize. I don't deserve it. Um, I'm just one of the people working on any project at SAP, making the RDF possible. But I think I'll share a lot of that with my colleagues um, so that you can also enjoy the wonderful cups. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for that honor. It's been a real pleasure to come here to the Bio Hackathons and make sure that this RDF thing really works for us. And I get to my top of my talk. Um, any product has been on the semantic web for a while now, um, from before I started it. I'm the second developer who does the RDF. So my role is as a lead developer for the new product public services such as WW and Spark is to make our information available. But I of course making information available is only worth it if information is worthwhile. Of course, we have a large team of curators and other colleagues in private and by and our colleagues at VRD yeah, who make this possible. And SwissProd has been around the block for a while. Last year we had our 30 year anniversary presentation. Uh, 30 year presentation. And that means we've seen enough technology hobby, uh, fashions come and go. But RDM seems to be one that seems to stick because it matches what the field needs more than other ones. And this is where commercial IT and life science IT starts to diverge because we need different things than what large companies like Google or Facebook do. But in Swiss Group Group, we develop and annotate and maintain different databases. And we always try to feed them back into the Inuproc DB Swiss product, but they are also larger than just Inuproc. For example, we work on ProSite and HAMAP, which are rule-based systems for doing annotation on homology. So you make a protein model, you domain, describe it, and then use it to annotate entries. Viral zone is for virologists, so it's very much more used for people who are actually in virology, medical side. Well, we also have chemicals. Um, there's a whole class of chemicals which are very important in our biology, but not well documented. Swiss lipids tries to solve that problem, doing the curation style of Swiss blood, but then for the lipids. And to bring it all back together, we have RIA. RIA we do with EBI, and that is a reaction database. To say, these enzymes, these proteins react this way, they do these kind of activities. And that is used to annotate both Swiss blood and Swiss lipids to say, and HAMA. So we always try to connect them, making things link. And for a long time, Swiss Post has been part of Intro, it's our 15th year, and it looks like this. And this is when I started with Iniprot as an intern. This is what it looked like, wonderful blue. We changed all our logos except PIR to get consistently. And this is when I joined as a real employee, Swiss Post Iniprot with a little bit. More blue, prettier in some ways, and had to redesign afterwards to make it even nicer. But it always comes to the question is why do we provide RDF? It wasn't popular, definitely not 10 years ago. And in the beginning, it was always a question of why do we bother doing this? It doesn't seem to be something that anybody else is doing. Well, one of the problems in our field has been can people actually access the data and use it? And projects like BioJava, BioPro, BioPython, BioRuby, and others have made it more possible to do it. But it always started with the point, I need to parse some data before I can use it. How do you access the knowledge in such a big database? Then having gotten one database done, how do I link it with information in another database? And this is actually my first real job before I started any part, was part of doing these kind of things. For the data genome, get all the data that's out there already, try to use it, and you spend months writing parsers and doing very little science. And my predecessor, Eric Jane, said, Well, this doesn't really work for us. We need to stop doing this. We need to stop wasting the effort in parsing data. RDF might be the solution, and I think he has been proven right. Because once you do your data in RDF, it's free links, you no longer need to parse it, you just need to ask questions. Sure, it's technically difficult, but it's possible to spark. If you want to just show some data, I'll use either some JSON-LD or full RDFXML. But even though the visualization changes, how you write the information, the knowledge on this, the actual knowledge model stays the same. So it means that if you are used to the database in your Sparkle endpoint, 
and you can start using some REST services, your data model doesn't change. You don't need to relearn really how to access the same information. And we've been at it for a long time. Eric, my predecessor, started with it in 2003, first PITAS. It was very small then, with 60 million triples. And this was when AL1 came out and people started doing reasoning and started making data available. But Infra RDF became public production service via REST services in 2007 and in 2008. I joined the developer this project. Also, the first time I went to a biohackathon and actually met the people who want to use the data. I started talking to people saying, well, Iniprod is big, and that was already 10 years ago, and now it's really much bigger. And you already have problems of just ingesting it and using it. In 2012, we were joined by BBJ. I was very happy to have the second large database being available in RDF and showing what happens if you pre-link these databases. So when you add somebody, took the Iniprod RDF data dump and took the BBJ RDF data dump, and put it in one database, it was pretty linked. Everything was already accessible. And that is already helping people with the bigger money in pots, like the pharma industry who started using our data more than it did before. In 2013, we got some money and we got some servers, well, one server, and we started with the PTAS Portal in platform to see, can we actually provide a real production quality service for people to use these Sparkle queries? Will you want to time out? Will you be able to ask interesting biological questions? Answer was yes. He could ask interesting biological questions. And then we were at all, right? joined by more services from EPI. And we went into production in 2013, where it really became if we start doing changes, we'll give you an announcement. We'll make sure that there's uptime as you know, much as possible, considering free resources on the web. And
can use the same readout kind of actions and can say, in this biological context, it goes to the background. But we're not only doing small projects, we're also doing project projects going into the healthcare industries. And this is Amidia, perhaps is the second stage of it, where we just took laboratory information, and this is a very small slide of it, where we took just experimental information, we have a mouse, we weighed it, we did some measurements on it, and this was its insulin behavior, and this was the diet. And that project worked really nicely. And now we're actually going into working with patient data. But the data model hasn't significantly changed. So the same Sparkle query that you write for the human data will also work on the mouse data. Human data is by firewalls and secured, and you need access controls and the right certificates on your browser to make it all work. But it's the same data model. So the queries for the public data and the queries for the public private data work the same way. Now we come to the point where we start linking all our data again. Because this project from Rhapsody for human data is actually a RAM going back to one of our other projects, Swiss Lipids. Because diabetes and fats are closely related. And actually looking at your diet and say, well, if these fats are not present, then you can't actually make these kind of data, uh, not data structures, your chemical structures in your body. And then for that, we need to go back to the literature and say, well, what kind of lipid pathways do we actually have? Now we go back to data curation, back to Swiss lipids. But we always connect these things, and all these things are connectable because we go back to one basic low level data format. Each time it's RDF with IMIs is identified. And the nice thing about making all our data us available for RDF, it's much, much easier to be fair if your data is in RDF than otherwise. Because it's findable, because it's just <coughs> there on the web, people can access it. It's accessible because well, it's a standard format. It's interoperable goal because you can actually just throw it all together in one big box and it comes out as a nice data warehouse. And we reuse each other's data. That's what we're showing in our different projects at this SID, is that we keep on reusing our, of each other's data because it has become easy to re reuse each other's data. And with that note about making it easy to reuse each other's data, I'm looking forward to reuse all of your data and take credit for it. <laughs>